Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in uh, today to the One Recourse Radio Podcast, where we're your number one source for business entertainment. We want to thank everybody for tuning in today uh, to the kickoff of our show, where, where we're going to be setting the precedents from now moving forward of how you receive business information. So when you tune in, you're going to be hearing from, uh, hearing and entertained by industry experts in their perspective field. You're going to hear about relevant and current events uh, and also receive information to help propel you to a position of wealth. Um, today's show is, is actually sponsored by One Recourse, which is Long Island's premier affordable marketing and mentoring services. So if, you, you, if you're in a position where you might have started a business, you have a business and you got rid of your mar- of your marketing guy and uh, you're looking to get sound advice, this may be one of the uh, companies that you want to speak with, find out more about their services and see if they'll be able to help you out. And you can find more information about One Recourse at www.onerecourse.com. Also, you can follow them on Twitter. You can subscribe to their YouTube channel. Uh, and, and I believe you can follow them on Instagram at One Recourse TV. So... We're actually really fortunate to have the CEO and owner of One Recourse, uh, who's going to be helping out with our show today, Mr. Uh, Dennis Buchanan. Dennis, you want to say anything to the people? Yes, yes, yes. Hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in to our kickoff show. We really appreciate it. We hope you have the opportunity to learn some new things and, um, you know, tune in to more of our shows we have yet to come. All right, sounds good. So let's go ahead and move forward with the show. Uh, introduce our guest. We actually have Mr. Joshua Morrison of uh, Long Island Dip and Customs. Uh, you know, I, we like to call him the entrepreneur's entrepreneur. You know, uh, he's a gentleman who's who's involved with, you know, a, um, a, as far as, uh, I like to say he's an advocate um, of breast cancer, you know, very involved in a lot of philanthropic um Projects. He's also, when it comes to business, he's real big about empowering the youth and brings on a number of different interns to involve them to help give them business experience. But on top of that, he's a you know father and a husband. Uh, but w- one of the things I like to also say about this gentleman is that he knows how to identify opportunity. And I think in the world of business, that's very important. So without further ado, we want to you know welcome uh, Mr. Joshua Morrison to to the call. Well, well, thank you guys for having me. Um, I, I really do appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to talking business with these gentlemen tonight. Sounds good, man. Sounds real good. We look forward to it as well. So let's get right into it. Uh, for, first, we'd like to find out, you know, why don't you tell me a little bit about your position in the business arena and the businesses that you are involved in? All right. Um, well, I'm currently the, um, well, the owner of Long Island Different Customs. I'm also the owner of uh, LMBmagazine.com. Um, my premier, one of my primary businesses is going to be Smokers Depot. Um, I am currently in development of a product uh, by the name of Smart Shower. Um, I am also uh, I also have my own sports drink, uh, which is uh, in uh, Costa Rica actually, which is where I lived there for a while as well. So, you know, I have my hands in uh, you know various different businesses. And um, a few other things I'm not going to mention here because, you know, this is still in the works. Hey, not a problem, man. Not a problem. We, <laughs> we, we know uh, less is always best, and you, you never tell the left hand what the right hand is doing, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you're involved in a lot of different industries. Yes, Can you kind of give us an idea about, how, you know, how you got your start into the business world and into all those different industries? Um, well, I really got my start, I'm going to say, in the business world uh, from a really young age. Uh, my father uh, was an entrepreneur, a businessman. Uh, so, you know, I started working probably at the age of, I think, like nine years old, honestly. And, um, you know, again, I'm talking about working, you know, eight, like, you know, during the summer at least, eight o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock at night. And, um, you know, so being a manager by the time I was like 11 and, you know, being able to, you know, learning how to speak with people, learning how to treat people, um, you know, learning from a young age, you know, customer service was everything. And uh, that's that's really, really where I got my, you know, start or I was introduced to the business world. And uh, my first business, I'm going to say, on my own, I was actually living in Mexico City at the time. And I, um, you know, just trying to find out, you know, what I could do. Um, you know what, what opportunities I had, and my, one of my first businesses actually was an English school that I had started on my own. So that's how I, 
you know, kind of got started <laughs> into uh, business. Nice. Very, very uh, interesting. I got a question for you. Uh, now, we know your company, one of the companies that you run is Long Island Dipping Customs. And uh, I know your website is www.plastydipli.com. Can you kind of explain to our listeners a little bit about what Plasti Dip is and what Long Island Dipping Customs does? All right. Well, uh, well Plasti Dip uh, essentially is it's a rubber-based coating um, that, uh, you know, can go over your vehicle. So um, it's rubber-based paint, essentially, is what it is. Um, you know, we now like to call it liquid wrap. Uh, just because, again, it's advanced from so much more from being just, just Plastic Dip now. And, um, again, what I feel Plastic Dip or, or Liquid Wrap is, you know, it's the future of automotive paint and uh, automotive customization, you know. Uh, for so many years, obviously, you know, since you know, the beginning of the vehicle, it's been, you know, the same old thing over and over again. Um, obviously, you know, vinyl wrapping came around, you know, quite some time ago. Um, but it's really, really expensive, you know. And I've always felt that any industry or any product that you can sell to the masses, um, you know, has a future. And uh, essentially, that's what liquid wrap is. You know, I, I do feel that it is a future. And, um, you know, it's an opportunity for the everyday person to, you know, customize their vehicle or alter their vehicle, you know, without spending, you know, large amounts of money on it. Wow, that sounds like a really cool product. Thanks for sharing. Not a problem, not a problem. And uh, being in that industry, you know, I guess um, it, it sounds like, you know, you're going to be, in a, you're going to innovate how people, you know, I guess, uh, apply this coding or um, utilize it for their, their vehicles and, and, you know, cars, trucks and different things of that nature. Being that, you know, at the forefront of something like this, you know, what does that, how does that make you feel? Um, For me, you know, being a businessman, I think that, you know, for me at least, it's really exciting um, just because it's a new industry, you know, and, and when I say a new industry, I mean at the most maybe five years old, you know, which for anything is a really, really young industry. And then um, the, the product was originally meant to be like a do-it-yourself thing, you know, so this was something that you could, you know, do in your driveway, you know, or do in your garage or whatever it is, Um but what I explain to most people is just because it's a do-it-yourself product doesn't mean it's meant for everyone to do it themselves, you know? Um, <laughs> I forgot you. So in the beginning of this, you know, a lot of the guys that started doing it, you know, it was kind of like a like a boys club almost, you know what I mean? And, and it was more of like a, hey, I'm going to do it. Hey, you should do it too kind of thing, you know? So when I came into the industry, I wanted to take more of the approach of like saying, you know, hey, listen, you know, this is a product that, the masses are going to want, you know, dealerships can use, um, you know, the everyday person can use to make their vehicle their own, essentially, you know, um, not everyone wants a black, white, blue, you know, green vehicle. They, they want something that's a little bit different. So, you know, my take on it was just, you know, like, listen, you know what, I, I'm going to kind of keep my ear out to see, you know, what people want and, you know, give them the customer service that I was raised giving. And um, I think that that so far has been, you know, um, it's attributed to a lot of our success so far. That's, that's, no, that's a good deal. That's, that sounds good. And um, now I see the evolution of this. You know, you said it's a, it's a very young industry um, and that, uh, you know, it, it developed from a place where it was do-it-yourself to, you know, companies like yourself um, who providing this type of a service when when other companies start to catch on, what do you, what do you think that I guess is your plan to stay relevant in the market? Well, I mean, again, my 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 take on on business, at least in in this business, mm -hmm. is is going to be customer service. You know, and I think that a lot of times, um, or or so far, you know, everyone, like I said, everyone's been kind of looking at it like a boys' club. You know. And I feel that, you know, we've been able to pull out ahead so far um, that, you know, as long as we continue, you know, pushing customer service, um, pushing quality as well. You know, a lot of the times, you know, anyone feels like, okay, well, it's a do-it-yourself product, so you know what, I'm just going to start tomorrow and I'm going to make this work for me. You know, it, it, it's a little bit more to it. So as long as we keep up, you know, our quality of work um, and as well that customer service, I think that, you know, we'll, we'll definitely... Uh, hopefully you know stay ahead of the game and, and absolutely stay relevant gotcha uh -huh. but 
Nah, that's not <laughs> good. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I mean, that it's, you know, funny how you mentioned that customer service. A, a lot of times business owners tend to not factor in the importance of customer service and how much and how important it can be to their business. But with that being said, what are your goals uh, for your company? Like, where do you see it going? What, what are you trying to achieve? Um, again, for me, uh, I, I think that, you know, in the beginning, again, you know, Classy dip or liquid wrap, you know, just get, got a bad name uh, okay. because you know what would happen was a lot of times you know people would go out and do it and they wouldn't do it properly and they do it with, they wouldn't do it well. So essentially, my goal is or my goal at least you know for 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 our industry <clears throat> is to kind of uh, you know absolutely change that name. You know, let people know that listen, this is a quality product for quality vehicles. You know what I mean? Or you know the everyday Joe that you know might drive you know, a 1992, you know, Volkswagen Beetle, you know, um, and, and that's going to be our goal. Our goal is going to be to put it out to the people and listen, this is for everyone. This is for anyone and everyone that wants to use this product to customize their vehicle. Um, or as, you know, as, as we've seen in, in the month of October where we did, you know, the breast cancer awareness month, you know, this product can also be used for good. You know, it can also be, it can also be used, um, to bring awareness, um, to 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 into our industry as well as you know uh, and for the month of obviously the month of, of, of October was breast cancer uh, where we ran something was what was called the wings of life and uh, it was something as simple as a side view mirrors on people's vehicles but you know again it brought awareness to it so that's my goal my goal is to you know um, just to show you know show people you know in general that you know this product is extremely versatile. And um, you know that that's 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 you know that's one of my main things I'm gonna say. Mm-hmm. That uh, sounds good. And I, I figured I you know touch base on this one. Uh, I'm sure the uh, some there's some listeners out there, especially because October you know was Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and you know, there's a lot of companies that find different ways to get involved um, with with but you know with with that month and and what it represents. Um, was there a specific reason why you decided to get involved with that? Uh, well, me, myself, um, you know, as I said, in, you know, in the industry that we had did with uh, Horizon Files, you know, my, in my case, my Dobby, um, who is, uh, she, she's, you know, I'm not going to say not, she's not actually a blood relative of mine, um, but she is a, a friend of my family's. Uh, she, you know, helped, you know, she helped raise my daughter, essentially. And uh, this is a woman that I care for dearly, um, was actually affected by breast cancer. Um, my mother as well actually suffered from breast cancer. And, you know, it was just something that obviously, you know, I, I had heard about and, you know, it just never uh, hit home for me um, until recently. And, um, you know, again, I, I wanted, you know, we wanted, I wanted to come up with a way or we wanted to come up with a way where, you know, we could say, you know what, this is a major problem that affects more people than you know, sometimes we know. And, um, and, you know, that's what we were able to do, you know, just by doing something as simple as, you know, you know, paint, you know, painting the uh, wings of life, what we call them, on people's vehicles, which were, you know, painting the side of your mirrors pink. Nah, that's, that's, that's awesome. And, yeah, and we all know that, you know, of course, when, when it hits home, um, you know, I've never, actually, you know, now that I think about it, I had a cousin who, um, about 15 years ago, she had recovered from breast cancer, and um, you know when it when it hits when it hits at home, you know you tend to get a little bit more passion and more involved. So you know I definitely commend you on taking those steps to find a way um, to have something that you know affected you and your family um, and all the loved ones around you, and then find a way to uh, create a philanthropic um, approach to you know help others that might be going through that same situation. I think that's a big deal. Absolutely. And again, I'm, you know, I want to say, you know, thank you to everyone that was involved in that. And um, again, I think that, you know, we definitely raised some funds for it. So um, overall, I was very, very happy with the, um, with the outcome of that, uh, of, that of, 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 you know, that entire campaign, I'm going to say. Are you looking to do it again next year? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I definitely look forward to it. Um, I look forward to actually, you know, hopefully getting involved with, with, with other, um, you know, organizations, you know, in, in the months to follow to, you know, just raise awareness 
And, uh, you know, also, you know, the idea is to have fun as well, you know. I look forward to, you know, next Halloween and, you know, that kind of stuff like that as well, you know. <laughs> the, beautiful, the beautiful part about our industry is, you know, it's, it's something that's always changing and, you know, it's something that we can change from one day to another. And obviously, you know, one thing that I didn't mention before is it's peelable. You know what I mean? It's not something that's permanent, you know. It doesn't have to be on there forever. So you can play and have fun with this, Um and you know, I bring bring joy to others essentially. Wow, uh, it's really cool. So, so Josh, uh, you know, I'd like to ask you, what would you say some of your personal uh, habits are that attribute to your success? The like, kind of the things that your your mantra of, of habits, you know, that got you to where you are, like you that really helped. Um, I'm gonna say for me, um, I, again, I think everyone has to kind of find, you know, what 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 makes them run essentially. And uh, I just feel that mine is, is, you know, absolute perseverance, you know, always pushing forward, um, always looking for new ideas, always looking to innovate in any way possible. You're always looking for, you know, what my competitors aren't doing. And if I don't have any competitors at the moment, you know, um, how can I make my product as best as possible? Um, And again, customer service, customer service, customer service, you know, what are my clients going to want? You know, what are my customers going to want to hear? What, what are they going to want to see? So I think that that's, uh, you know, what, that's what's kind of held me um, to, to continue to propel forward. Um, and, you know, I, I my thing is, I'm going to say, I, I'm not afraid to fail. You know, not every okay. business that, that, that I'm going to start or not every business that I'm going to get into is going to be, not every business venture is going to be successful. You know, I, I actually, um, I was uh, reading something not too long ago and it was on Richard Branson. And um, they said that he had started over like 500 companies, something like that. And, wow. you know, and, you know, that's that doer mentality of, listen, I'll try it. And if it doesn't work, Okay, you know, next time around, I'll, I'll try to plan a little bit better, or maybe sometimes it's, it's about timing. But you know, my thing, like I said, is perseverance and not, you know, not afraid of being, you know, uh, of failing. You know, I kind of, I kind of feel like I keep that the concept of always having your back against the wall. You know, either it's gonna go, I'm gonna either go all in or all out of, um, you know, any situation that are or that I'm gonna get into, and. Um, you know, so far it's it's worked out. I'm gonna say. <laughs> well, uh, since, we're on, since we're on the since we're on the uh, the topic of, of failing, right? Um, you started your you, when you first got into business for yourself. Well, let me say this: you've been in business for how long? Um, wait, in, in this current business, or you mean like as a all together, just myself. all to get years. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a business owner myself, I'm gonna say it's about tw- uh, about. 11, 12 years now, so okay, still rather so, young, you know, since I started my own business, is that was about 11, 12 years. Gotcha, and your first one, you, how, how old were you when you first, when you started your first one? My first business, I want to say I was about 19. Okay, you're 19 years old, all right. Yeah. So, because I, I know we probably going to have two types of listeners, you know, you, you, there's a, the first listener who says, you know what, you should if you're going to work start a business in this industry you should work in that field for a little bit you should get the experience and then once you've had about a good 10 15 years under your belt it might be good to start your own thing and then the other one that says you know what just go make it happen <laughs> you know um absolutely what would, what what was your perspective if you were to look at the how you got started you know, I, I, you had mentioned that you got a little, you know, some experience working with your father. Um, I'm sure you picked up some other experiences along the way. Uh, how would you recommend to that listener out there who's like, you know what, I want to start a business, but I just don't know what, how I should go about it. What would you recommend? Um, well, I'm a firm believer, and there are definitely two types of, or maybe even more, but, you know, I, I break down the two different groups of, of businessmen or businesswomen. Um, there are those that are going to go out and, you know, they're planners, and that's what they're going to do. You know, they're going to try to look at every single detail possible, try to minimize their losses, and I feel like any business person should try to do that. Um, then you're going to have those people out there that, you know, I'm going to say more cowboy yes. You know, we're, we're looking to get out there, you know, make a statement, get it going, you know, as soon as possible, get it off the ground and kind of learn as we go kind of concept. So, you know, I'm just going to say, you know, 
for, to anyone that's, that's looking to do business, do what works for you. You know, um, reading a book is, is fine and, and, you know, getting advice and things like that is fine. But at the end of the day, if you're not passionate about what you're going to do, then it's not going to work out. You know, if you're doubting yourself from day one, then it's not going to work out, you know. So for you planners out there, plan ahead, you know. Um, um, obviously, anyone that, that wants you to enter business, obviously, you know, just, you can't, it, it's, it's literally impossible to uh, plan for everything. You never know, you know. Google didn't know that, you know, within the first, you know, year, two years of their business that it was going to be as big as it was. But they took the risk and, you know, it paid off. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's one of those situations where it's luck of the draw. Uh, me, myself, like I said, I, I'm more of a get out there, try it, get my hands dirty and, you know, get into the trenches and say, hey, listen, you know what? I'm going to make this work by any means necessary. And um, again, that, that's just what I would recommend, you know, go with what makes you feel more comfortable. Um, but, you know, if you're not willing to risk it all, um, then... I, you know, going into business might not be the way for you. Um, you know, some people I, I do feel, you know, are, are, are people that, you know, school is necessary. You know, for other people, schooling might not be that necessary. You know, you're just like, listen, I'm a go-getter and that's just what I'm going to do regardless. Um, and others, you know, it's, it's, you need to take that route of, you know, planning as much as possible. Okay. So... I definitely that was definitely a great answer to the question of, as well as a great question. So I have a question for you. What is one mistake you made in business that you learned from and how has it changed how you do business today? Um I'm gonna say my biggest mistake is uh just getting comfortable. You know, okay. when you get comfortable you stop innovating. When you get comfortable, you stop trying as much. You know, when you get comfortable, you kind of, you, you have a, you know, we all have a tendency to be kind of like, ah, you know, that'll work itself out. And I feel that, you know, in business, you can't do that. Or at least if you want to continue to be successful, you can't do that. You know, you have to always be kind of pushing yourself to find out, okay, how can I make my business better? How can I, you know, if I do have competition, how can I be better than my competition? How can I one up my competition? You know, never rely on someone else, I'm going to say, to... To, to, to make your company better, you know? And what I mean by that is, you know, that doesn't mean try to do everything yourself. You know, in, in, in my case, you know, I've worked with, you know, um, you know, marketing directors and things like that in the past. And these are people that are gonna advise you on what you should do, but that is still you yourself, you know, taking that initiative to make your business better. And, you know, that, that for me is just, you know, I, I think key, but, you know, I, I definitely learned that you know you can't you can't get comfortable. Getting comfortable is you know essentially could be deadly for any business. That's, that's deep. Uh, I think that's deep. I mean, wow, just the way you said that. I'm. It's not something that would be first come to mind when people think of mistakes they made and like, oh, I spent too much money here or I didn't do that. But the silent killer of business is that people get comfortable and they lose focus, and from that, it's downhill. Great Absolutely. I mean, again, like you just said, you know, obviously funding and things like that, you know, is, is something that can kill your business as well. But um, again, in my case, you know, I, I, I tend to, I, tend, I, I don't penny pinch, but <laughs> I do pay attention <laughs> to my numbers, you know, uh, on a regular basis. But, you know, again, getting comfortable can, you know, even, you know, let's say industry leaders, you know, such as Google and things like that, you know, if they got comfortable today or tomorrow, you know, it, there's no guarantee that they'll be able to, uh, you know, recover from that. And, um, you know, that's, that's, that's unfortunately, that's just how it goes. All right. So, uh, you know how they say, they say that the, uh, uh, not, not, you know, you, you mentioned about being comfortable and nothing ever stays the same or either grows or it dies. And I feel that, you know, once you become comfortable, you, Take yourself from that growth path. So it sounds like you know once you realize that you became aware and you just you know you you, you try to stay on the growth path as much as you can to uh, stay relevant and 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 forward progress. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's uh, that's about a hundred percent correct. All right, sounds good, man. And um, 
as you were as you were just kind of breaking that down to the listeners and you know to us as well. Um, yeah, I mentioned you mentioned two things. You mentioned team and you mentioned the numbers. And I know that, like you said, you're you're a get your hands dirty kind of guy. You know, you roll the sleeves, you you, you go to work. Um, how important is uh, having a team and and actually being consciously aware of the numbers of your business uh, to you as a business owner? Um, the right team uh, is, is is just as important as you know staying relevant and and, and trying to stay innovative. Um, the right the, the the wrong people in any business you know can ruin a business. You know, um, you know. So you need people that you can rely on when you're not there or when you are out. You know, trying to innovate and you know trying to look for new outlets uh, and new ways for your business to grow. You need the right people on your team so you know that you know listen when I'm not around you know these people care about my business just as much as I do so um, again you know just, just very very important and uh, your other question I believe you said was was funding correct no as far as the numbers as far as you know the, the, the numbers that drive the business uh, what do you mean? As as in what exactly? I'm not well, you sure say you pay that. attention. You pay attention to your numbers. So why don't you just give us an idea? What is, what okay. is the type of numbers that you do pay attention to, and well, how important uh, is it to you? Again, you know, you you want to pay attention to uh, you know how many clients you're getting. Uh, you know, if, if you're a web if you're a web based business, you want to see how many heads you're getting. You want to see how many clicks you're getting. You want to see how many visits you're getting. You know, you want to see how long you know people are interacting with your site. Um, and those kind of things like that, you know, if, if you're in the retail business, you want to see how many clients are coming at, are in and out of your door. Uh, you want to see how many of those customers are repeat customers. You know, you want to see how many new customers you're getting. You know, all of those things are very, very important, um, you know, when it comes to your numbers. Um, you know, you, you also you also want to make sure that, you know, obviously, you know, your price points are, are not too high. They're not too low. You want to make sure you're not giving too much away, but at the same time, you're not taking too much. Um, because I do, I do feel that you know sometimes you know people are get in and like, oh, you know, I just want to make as much money as possible, and that's easy to say, you know. But at the end of the day, if your price point's too high, your customer can come in and swoop in right underneath your nose, and you're gone. And unfortunately, when things like that happen, sometimes there is no recovery. You know, um, you know, in, in, in the beginning of let's say web browsers and, and or, or you know internet companies, you know AOL and Yahoo were on top for so many years. You know, they were they were the number one companies for so many years, and you know, unfortunately, that you know they're still obviously multi billion dollar companies and things like that. But you know, at some point or another, they already became complacent, and that allowed a company like Google, let's say for example, to come in and uh, kind of swoop in and, and, and take it from them. And again, it's because, you know, they weren't paying attention to their numbers. And when you're not paying attention to what your clients, uh, you know, are, 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 are looking for, essentially. And, you know, once their numbers drop, a lot of these companies never recover. So, no, your numbers are very, very, very important. You know, you want to pay attention to those things. And it, it's a lot easier than most people think. Um, it's just, you know, again, when you have your feet on the ground, as I say, where, you know, you're involved then, you know, these are things that you can see and you can kind of find out on a day-to-day basis. All right, guys. Great. Mm-hmm. Well, that was uh, cool. So, I mean, clearly, you know, just for speaking with you, uh, you have a very good business sense about you. You're very focused and driven and, uh, like, the core values of how you run your business. But, as I like to think, you know, sometimes it's not always about business. So, just be random. What do you like to do when you go out? Like, you know, there's got to be another side of Josh other than the businessman you are. How do you like unwind and, and do things like that to to break up the monotony? <laughs> well, uh, I'm well. Uh, as uh, as mentioned at the beginning, you know, I'm a I'm a family man. Okay. So you know, I definitely enjoy spending time with my kids. Okay. Uh, you know, just, just going out with them, doing different things. Uh, but on my own personal unwind time, and uh, you guys better not judge me for this. I actually, <laughs> I actually like to watch cartoons. Cartoons. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, cartoons, cartoons are my downtime, man. You know, okay. it's, it's and um, I've actually had this conversation with various people, and they're like, they're like, why cartoons? And and you know, just the main reason for it is, you know, cartoons are, you know, they're not real. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't want to watch any TV shows where I have to 
undercover plot lines or any other good stuff. You know, I just want to, you know, a guy flying in the air in his underwear. You know what I mean? It's just a guy flying in the air in his underwear. And that's just what it is, you know? My mind gets a break and a rest from, uh, you know, constantly thinking about, you know, how, how to grow. How can we be better? How can we do more? So uh, that, that's, that's part of my unwind time, though. Well, yeah. let's talk about that for a minute because, um, you know, I, listen, man, I, I'm not judging you because as a business owner myself, I do the same thing in my downtime. <laughs> um, you know, I, music, music downtime and watching uh, music, cartoons, and uh, and watching interviews is what I do to unwind. So since we're on the topic, uh, yeah. you know, a couple of weeks ago we talked about music. I know um, J- uh, there's a uh, artist most people know by the name of Jada Kiss put out, uh, you know, his album Top 5 Dead or Alive, right? Okay, okay. okay. And, um, you know, Top 5, you know, he always talks about the Top 5, you know, um, artists that he would oh. uh, put in, you know, that he holds in, I guess, in his his arsenal of people that he feels are the Top 5 best um, lyricists, artists, rappers, or whatever the case may be. Since we're talking about cartoons, what's Joshua Morrison's top five cartoons that he watches? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's 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 a really good one. Um, I, you know what? Honestly, that's really, really, really hard. Um, I, I mean, I can tell you my top five now, maybe, but I don't know about my top five. I, I, you know what? I'm I'm really big into anime. Oh, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll give you my top five now. Okay, uh, go with now. Yeah, let's do that. One, one Goku? Punch Man. <laughs> no, no, no. One Punch Man right now is one of my favorite cartoons. Uh, one of my favorite animes right now. Um, let me think. What else have I been watching? I've been watching. Uh, there's another one called Blue Steel, uh, which is another really cool uh, anime of mine that I love. Um. Let me think. Fairy Tale is another one of my favorite animes that I've been watching lately. Um, what is the name of this other cartoon? I, I can't think of it right now. I actually seen it not too long ago. Um, I, I can't. I, I, I don't know why I can't think of the name of it right now. Honestly speaking, oh, what am I up to three so far? <laughs> yeah, three. Got three. three. I think I'm at three right now. Um, let me think. I, I'm trying to I can't remember the name of the one that I want to say which, which I was just talking about the other day but uh, Elf and Lead uh, which is another really weird cartoon as well and then uh, right now I'm watching Star Wars Rebels as well it's just one you know one of my other ones but there, there's so many I, I, I watch so much anime on my downtime uh, which is usually like a little bit before I go to bed but um those are like my top five, you know. I'm I'm big into uh, I'm big into anime, like I said, and you know that's like my, you know, all, all these there's so many of them. You know, they're, they're only usually like uh, one season long, so there's been so many of them. I, I can't remember anymore. Oh uh, man, you don't have uh, Naruto, uh, Bleach, or or full uh, Alchem- or the was the Alchemist Full Metal Jacket? You know what? Full Metal Alchemist is one of my favorite. You know what? Top five is definitely Full Metal Alchemist. I'm glad you <laughs> mentioned that one. That is definitely one of my favorites. Um, not what I started watching for a while, but you know, I kind of got bored. That's about the only one I watch. I, I like Naruto, okay? I, I watched him grow up. I like the ones that are that are kind of uh, boutique esque, where, you know, there's only like a like a season, maybe like two one seasons season. of them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know, like Dead Man Wonderland, you know, it's 13 episodes, they're good. See you later, adios, that's it, never to be made again. Gargantia is another one that I love to watch. And, you know, that's it. There's 24 episodes of them. They're gone. See you later. Never to return. So, gotcha. you know. Gotcha. Uh, that, so, that's, you have a lane that's for where I am you're, on that one, though. You're, you're the, the boutique anime viewer. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to put it. That's definitely a good way to put it. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Well, I, you know what? One thing I will say uh, is that you got to have something that allows you to unwind. And as far as when you're talking about cartoons, for me, I, I watch a lot of it because it allows you to keep the creative, the innovative and creative side. And how can you be successful? You were, you were, you were the most innovative when you were a child. So Absolutely. 
Right, exactly. So you got to keep that part alive, and I, I commend you on that, man. I commend you for putting it out there on podcast. Listen, yeah. man, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> That's cool, man. Well, let's talk about since we're on the topic of, you know, we talked about the business, but let's, as uh, Joshua Morrison, as the entrepreneur, you know, you you gave us a long laundry list of of ways that you're getting paper out here. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the listeners are listening. They're like, man, he's he's really out there doing his thing. There's somebody that just became inspired from what from what they just heard, right? So my question uh, to you is, um, being that you're involved in a lot of these different uh, industries, whether it's product or service, um, how do you stay effective in all of these industries? Um, again, one of the things that you touched on earlier on, uh, is having the right team, you know, having the right people where you can have that peace of mind that, you know, your, your best interest is always being looked out for. And I definitely feel that's one of the things that, you know, that have allowed me to be able to go out and, and, and experiment, um, just because, you know, I, I know that I have the right people in the right positions. Uh, where I can, you know, go out there and, you know, I have to go to Costa Rica for three weeks or a month, you know, to meet with different teams and speak with the right people and, you know, uh, uh, the right corporate, you know, the right companies and corporations that, you know, I know that, you know, I want them to carry out a new product. Um, having that, that home base uh, being so well grounded, um, I, I'm going to say it has definitely been key to allowing me to, to, to uh, you know, to be able to expand out and move forward. Is there a certain number uh, of, of you know for for the size of businesses that, that you're running, or as as um, I guess as leveraged as you are in these different industries, is there a certain number that works that works well for you as far as team size? Um, not really, to be honest with you. You know, it it can be like that main. It can be one person that you know just runs things so efficiently that you know the other five or six people underneath them you know you don't even have to open up your voice and, and say anything to you know or sometimes it might be three or four people that you rely on you know those, those three or four poor people are the ones that kind of keep business going so i think that each industry definitely uh you know kind of has its has its own you know uh number of people that you need to kind of run it but you know yeah, it's a question of you have to be able to identify that as well. You know, a lot of business owners feel, and, and even myself, I've been victim of this. Of, you know, just having to feel like I have to have, I have to be hands on all the time. I have to be on top of every single thing all the time. You can't. You're one person, and especially if, if you know, like you're like myself, where you want to be able to touch other industries. Then you know you you have to kind of be able to say, okay, you know what? You take you let the reins go little by little. Mm-hmm. And then once you see them float, once you see them fly, it's like, okay, you know, don't let them go completely. But it's like, all right, I see you flying. I'm going to let you do your thing. I'm going to go over here for a second, but I'll be back to check on you in a little while. So it's got to be kind of like that. Gotcha. Now, I guess that, that, that poses a question. Building a team, how are you able to determine the people that you're going to add to your team that you want to work with? Is there like a question? Is there science behind it? Like what advice would you give to somebody who really understands and respects what you're doing and they want to build their team? What advice would you give them? Well, I mean, I would say like, for example, if you're someone that, you know, you already got kind of got things going, then I would just say use those people that helped you get successful the first time. You know, those are people that know your work, you know, they, they know your workhorse. They know how you work. They know how you handle, you know, they know how you talk. They know, you know, essentially what you're going to want and what you're going to want to do because they've already experienced it with you. You know, they were already at ground zero with you. So they know that, hey, listen, we're starting this new business venture. We're at ground zero. And, you know, there's no time or mistakes for error. Um, And for those people that are just getting starting out, unfortunately, it's trial and error. At the end of the day, you could get the best person. They could have the best degrees. You know what I mean? And they can have all the papers that says, hey, I'm great for your business. But guess what? They might not be that workhorse that you need. You know, they might not be the person that, listen, five o'clock comes around. Okay, I gotta gotta punch my clock because I gotta go home and, you know, do what I gotta do. And, you know, you might get that person that's a little less qualified that's like, hey, listen, it's five o'clock, but we still got three more hours of work to do. Don't worry about paying me overtime. Let's just get this job done. So, you know, everyone's gonna be, that's gonna be a trial and error situation. You know, there, there is no 
science forward, unfortunately, um, until again, you know, you build a workhorse, the workforce uh, that you're, you know, comfortable with, and um, you know that you feel, you know, is going to work best for you in whatever industry that you know that it is that you're that you're, that you're pushing forward into. Gotcha. Definitely. I mean, it ties into everything that you you said, which is really good. You know, it's a matter of you know you got to where you are with a strong team. You also have got to where you are where you not afraid to make mistakes. And, you know, that, that all just ties into exactly what you said. You know, you got to take chances with people and you learn from them. But once you got your team, it, it's helped you to build your success to where you are. So, absolutely. And, and, and I want to add one thing into that. A lot of businessmen, um, we, we get into this, this field or, when, you know, when you become successful enough um, and, and, and they're, 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 worldwide, they're worldwide known as yes men. Yes men will bring your business down. They will bring you down because once you start a business and there's no one to kind of oppose your ideas or to argue your ideas sometimes, um, that can be, you know, that can lead to, 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 to your demise as well. You know, you need those people that, like I said, you have those ground zero people that are like, hey, listen, man, that sounds cool and all. But that might not be for this, you know what I mean? You, <laughs> need, some, you need someone to to tell you, like, listen, you know, listen, I need you to, I, I know you got the reins right now, but I need you to kind of wheel, you know, kind of bring those in a little bit because what you're saying right now this will not work for this industry at all. And you know that that's what's gonna, you know, you, you might think to yourself, hey, listen, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend ten thousand dollars on radio, you know, which is something that I've, you know, done myself. You, you talking about one of the early lessons that I learned. You know, one of my industries, I decided to run radio, and I spent like I think it was like ten thousand dollars a month for a couple months, and I got absolutely nothing out of it, like absolutely nothing. And I have nothing against radio, but I, I'm for my business at least, I got nothing out of it. And uh, one of my one of my one of my GMs actually, I came to me in the beginning and was like, listen, I don't think radio is a thing for us. I was like, man, I got this, all right? Radio is <laughs> gonna work. <laughs> and it didn't work at all. Like, I, mean, I got maybe five people out of, you know, twenty or thirty thousand dollars that I spent. So you know, ground zero people, listen to them, okay? They know. You know, they know their stuff for that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua Morrison dropping gems out here. <laughs> yeah, trying, trying, trying. That was awesome, man. Well, I know um you know, as we're talking about, you know, your experiences, uh, you get mentioned that, you know, you, you roll sleeves up, you get dirty, but are, are there any quotes or affirmations that you live by? Um, me personally, not really. You know, again, I, I, I kind of say, you know, I, it's, it's, I, I like to just, you know, fight it like, like my, like my back's against the wall, whatever business that I'm in, you know. Um, one of the things that I, um, that I actually, have and, 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 a, and a creed that I live by is uh, when you work hard there's nothing you cannot achieve and it's a simple saying there's nothing special about it but it's the truth you know when you work hard and you put your hard work in you know it may not pay away when you, you it may not pay uh, when you want it to or when you expect it to but if you continue working hard eventually it will pay off wow okay very well said well said, well yes. said, man. Uh, well, well um, I know we're coming down to the close of uh, you know of our talk here, and we you know we definitely appreciate you for jumping on. But um, is there anything? Let's say you know, there's, there there there's a there's a, a lot of people out here that are looking to make that transition. We know statistically, what eighty percent of uh, Americans, or you know, um, we'll just talk about our country. You know, they dread they dread Monday mornings, and they're looking to make that transition. Right, so most people are looking to make that transition, you know, to the uh, to, to the S quadrant of the world, start a business, and then they want to transition potentially um, to, to you know to that big business status. Um, for that person out there that's that's thinking about it, you know, what advice would you give them? So you, you said the the, uh, the 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 person that's looking to take what to leave like they're their nine to five. They're looking to start a business. And again, yeah, they're looking to get the ball rolling. <laughs> Listen, I, I, only thing I can say is think about it, think about it, think about it. Being a business person and being an entrepreneur is not for everyone. That's just what it boils down to. Um, even after starting my first couple of businesses, I didn't realize. What it what, what what it meant to actually be a businessman 
um, until maybe my mid twenties or so. And I'll give that definition. And, and again, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a well. I'm going to say an entrepreneur. Let's say you know, instead of a businessman or, or a businesswoman, but you know, being an entrepreneur, for in my eyes at least is taking any business opportunity that comes along that you feel, you know, you can turn into a profit or you can, you know, you can build up yourself and turn it into something, you know? And, you know, if you have a dream that, uh, that you look, let's say you've always wanted to be a baker, you know, you went to school for it and you studied for it and everything else like that, but you, and you landed up working at Target, for example. You know, if you have the, 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 the dream you know, and the drive to go out there and start that bakery and you have ideas that you feel, you know, are going to work for you and, and, and the masses are going to just love, then I would say go for it. But if it's a hobby, if it's something you've thought about, if it's something that, oh, that's cool, you know, like, you know, I know right now, like, this is because I'm talking about the bakery and, you know, cupcakes, you know, for the last couple of years have been cool. So you're like, oh man, I like cupcakes. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to start a bakery sells cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> There's hundreds of them out there already. You know what I mean? So if you're if you're looking to jump out there on some fad that already exists, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. But if you have a vision of something that you want to make or an industry that you're looking to start up with, then, then go for it. You know, what do you have to lose? And as much as the, the term is has been watered down, but the truth is you you actually only live once. You know? So, you know, to, to, to live your entire life without regret, with regret and say, listen, I could have tried that or I could have did it or I could have been a success. If Steve Jobs, went, you know, when, when he was coming up said, hey, you know, I could have started a company called Apple. And, uh, you know, even after they had taken his company away from him, you know, I, I could have made the iPod. I could have made the iPad. Could have isn't for any businessman or businesswoman out there. It's either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. And if you're not going to do it, then stick to your nine to five. You know, it, it's secure money. There's nothing wrong with it, honestly speaking. And I tell anyone that has a nine to five job or anyone that's listened to this, I cold heartedly respect you. Honestly, I envy you in a sense because, you know, you're able to say, you know what? I'm comfortable where I am. I'm fine with this. And if absolutely anyone that says that there's anything wrong with that is a fool. There's nothing wrong with the job security and, you know, being able to pay your family, you know, being able to pay your family's bills or take care of your family with that nine to five. Because, you know, starting a business is a risk and it's going to be a risk. You know, there, there are no guarantees, no matter who you are. You know, no one knows that, say, for a fact, hey, I'm going to do this and people are going to accept it and they're going to love it and going to make hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars off of it. There are no guarantees in this world. So... That would be my advice for anyone that's looking to start a business. Make sure that you understand the commitment, the time, some of the sleepless nights, you know, some of the four, you know, you're laying in bed two o'clock in the morning thinking about like, oh man, how can I make that better? Oh, I could do this. You know what I mean? That's not for everyone. And if that's not for you, hey, that's perfectly fine. Who started? Man, I wish I had one of those like drop the bomb on it because that was that was great. You know, you know what I'm saying? I wish, oh, I wish I had something like that right there. You know, where it slaps when you need them, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, well listen, uh, you know, you dropped a lot of valuable, priceless information. Um, we just want to thank you for uh, for joining the show today. Uh, we want to thank you for dropping the gems. We're going to call them Joshua's gems from here on now. So when you come back on, <laughs> so when you come back on, we're going to have Joshua's gems. We're, gonna, we're just going to start the show off that way. Just be prepared. <laughs> but we, we little sound bites. <laughs> we just definitely look forward to having you back on. Um, it, you know, um, anytime you got something going on, you got you know when you when you uh, kick off this uh, breast cancer awareness initiative, we definitely want to have you back on the show. We can talk about that. Um, is there anything you want to um, tell the listeners? Any new promotions for any of your products or services? 
No, 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 not at all. I mean, again, you know, feel free to check us out. Obviously, www.plasticdipli.com. Uh, it's it's all about plastic dip right now. You know, it's like you know, I'm like, I'm like Diddy in a sense. I push what's most recent, and right now, okay, <laughs> people need to know that liquid wrap is the future for your vehicle. It protects your vehicle. It allows you to customize your vehicle. It allows you to make your vehicle your own. You know, at the end of the day, you know the way you dress is a reflection of your personality. The kind of car you drive, the color you drive, the, 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 your vehicle is the same thing. It reflects who you are. You no longer have to live, you know, with that boring black or that boring, boring white vehicle that you might have purchased. You can make it your own. So liquid wrap is the way to go. It's a hundred percent, you know, peelable and uh, completely customizable. So. And obviously, you know, it protects your vehicle, you know, from the harsh weather that we're about to get in New York soon. So, you know, it's all about Plastic Dip, www.plasticdipli.com. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You got you to gotta have the plugs. You got to have the plugs. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Well, once again, thank you so much for jumping on the show. And, you know, we look forward to having you back on. Um, I'm not sure, Dennis, you want to say anything before we uh, close up? Uh, now nah, again, just, you know, thank you, Joshua, for making our kickoff show uh, an amazing, informative, and bomb-dropping show. So really appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you as well. I appreciate it, guys. And much success to, to One Recourse and uh, this podcast as well. You know, I think that it's definitely something that a lot of people need. Uh, I think there's a lot of young entrepreneurs coming up and a lot of young businessmen, a lot of marketers coming up as well that can, you know, learn a lot from uh, what you gentlemen are doing on this show. So I wish you much, much success in the future. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. And we want to thank all of you for, for listening in, uh, tuning in to One Recourse Radio. Like you said, we're, we're just going to do our best to set the precedent for uh, how you receive this business information. We want to make sure you laugh. We want to make sure you got your notepad out. We want to make sure that you're recording this because uh, we all know that um, <clears throat> there's not, you know, there, there are a lot of podcasts and there's a lot of information out there, but uh, sometimes you might fall asleep on it. We don't want to be that guy <laughs> or we don't want to be that show. So we want to thank you all for tuning in. Um, to follow, uh, you know, follow us. You can uh, subscribe to us. We'll be uh, on Spreaker. Um, for those that know, you can download the Spreaker app. We'll be on Spreaker. We'll be on SoundCloud. Uh, we'll we'll be posting the audio version of this on YouTube. So follow us on all those channels, and we'll be able to get you tuned in. Um, to all upcoming uh, shows, all upcoming events that are connected to One Recourse, um, and you know, and uh, just everything that we got going on. So we thank you all for jumping on. Uh, look forward, stay tuned for our next upcoming show, and we uh, look forward to having you on. That we can entertain you with this great business information. Take care.